what would be considered a conventional propulsion plant, a power and propulsion plant in a tugboat, conventional tugboat. This is what you've got. You've got two diesel engines, which is technical, sometimes there's three. They're providing power directly to a shaft line of propeller. It's used for propulsion. Then you've got vessel service uh, generators, ship service generators here that are providing the hotel load for the vessel. This plant has almost no flexibility. If you want to go anywhere with lights on, everybody's running. You know, you get this guy running, this guy running, one of those running. So that's all the time. Anytime you're going anywhere with the vessel, whether you're in assist or transiting, all these resources are up and running, yet you're only using 10 to 15 percent power under most circumstances. So how do we uh, change the design? On the Carroll North, in the first one, when you're doing the new, dealing with a new build, you've got the flexibility to reduce the size of the main engines. Increase the size of the ship service generators, so you can have one generator that is optimized around the size of the power that you need that 10 to 15 percent power rating that, can, that you're using for transit. Then we put motor generators in the shaft line. And this is unique to this design. Having the diesel and the motor generator all on the same shaft line is a, is, was a fairly new concept. When we came up with this, we have a, this is part of the patent that we've got with Fox on, on this design. So this motor generator then can work to provide power along with the diesel to the propeller, or because the generator can also be used to generate electricity. The diesel engines, the ship service diesels, through a switchboard can be used to provide power to these motor generators. So you can declutch the main engines, and if you get this guy sized properly for that 10 to 15 percent, then you can just run this one diesel to propel the vessel. You mix in energy storage into the equation, and that other bump that we had almost <coughs> the, uh, the zero power requirement, it's about a 2 or 3 percent power, this energy storage then can be used to go into zero emission mode, where during the high efficiency or when you've got uh, additional capacity in these generators, when they're operating most efficiently, you can store energy in the batteries. Then you can pull energy off when you only have 20 or 30 kilowatts of hotel load and run the vessel on uh, batteries only for, for stop or idle mode. Okay, so we'll go through the flexibility of these configurations in a second, but. Uh, you add in a control system to oversee this, providing an HMI or human inter machine interface that allows the operator to visualize what's going on and get alarm data and that sort of thing, as well as control the various configurations here so that you get the most efficient use of the, uh, the system. Then you've got what we provided on the, uh, the Carroll Door, the first vessel that was working. So we talk about kind of a detailed one line of the, uh, if there's such a thing, detailed one line we talked about. The system configuration here, which is what was delivered essentially on the Carol and Dorothy. You've got a uh, AC bus here, which is providing hotel load to the various AC loads on the vessel. You've got a DC bus, which is providing all of the major consumers with power. The major consumers would be the motor generator sets, which are connected to the propellers. And you've got your auxiliary generators, which are able to provide power to the DC bus through these converters here. So I'll go through some of the terms quickly. Um, so oxygen, these are the auxiliary generators, the small uh, generators. On the, on the Carol and Dorothy, they were about 350 <coughs> kilowatts. And they're providing power down through to an AFE. AFE is an active front end. It's just a converter that converts AC power to DC power. It's also bi-directional, so power can move in both directions. In this case, we only use it in one direction. In this case, where it's going connected up to the AC bus, we use it bi-directionally. So you can push power onto the AC bus, or it can supply the AC bus and act as an inverter. Yeah. Those two auxiliary generators, are those also diesel? Yeah, they're, both, they're diesels as well. Yeah. So you're, uh, I'm not sure how familiar you are with marine configurations, but usually a, a power plant will have an electrical system that has multiple generators connected to it. They can operate in parallel to provide all the hotel loads or vessel service loads. So lights, air conditioning, galley, winches, all of that sort of stuff. Okay, so the, uh, the AFDs are used to support the DC bus and provide power in both directions. VFDs, that's called, that term refers to a variable frequency drive. 
that allows you to take DC power and turn it into AC power to run a normal motor, and the variable frequency means that you can change the speed of that motor. Okay? When we did this uh, application for the hybrid system, we had to develop something called an induction generator application so that this could be an MG set. In generator mode, as an induction generator, this can operate as a, as a variable speed induction generator and also supply power back onto the DC bus. Okay, then we've got the energy storage and the DC-DC converter. And that DC-DC converter just allows you to move energy on and off in and out of the batteries. Okay, this energy storage, that could be battery, it could be a, uh, a mechanical form of storage, <coughs> mass inertia storage, could be an ultra capacitor, it could be a hydrogen fuel cell. Okay, we've, we've built the system so that it com can accommodate any form of energy source storage, but basically, uh, you know, we'll use whatever is the best for the, the application and whatever is best as far as what technology can offer right now. Okay, so in the case of Carolyn Dorothy, it was lead acid. Two years later, in the case of the Campbell FOSS, which we just finished a, a few months ago, it was lithium polymer. And the best that we've done recently in Europe is lithium polymer as well. So we'll go through the modes of operation. So the system is designed to have several modes of operation. So the operator can <coughs> telegraph to the system what his intent is as far as operation of the vessel. That allows the vessel and the system to configure itself so that it operates most efficiently in that mode. So the first mode that we'll talk about is conventional mode. The great part about this system is that even though the uh, hybrid is, you know, is used 90% uh, or 99.9% .9 of the time, you still want that safety net to be able to back out and have a conventional system. With this driveline configuration, you're able to do that very seamlessly. So if there's any sort of failure in the hybrid mode, uh, the hybrid uh, system, then you can reconfigure to a conventional vessel just by closing the clutches here and the motor just becomes part of the shaft line, basically. So very easily, and that's something that can happen on the fly. If there's any sort of problem with the, uh, the hybrid system, the uh, captain can uh, switch over to conventional emergency. So in that mode, these guys are running just out of the propellers, getting its power directly from the main unit. And the, one of the auxiliary generators will be providing power to the AC bus as it would on a conventional bus. Stop mode, that's when the vessel might be a dock, tied up at its normal berth or in another dock in the harbor. In that mode, if it's at its own dock, then it might be on shore power, but that would be the case. In this mode, the main uh, difference of operation is that the propulsion units are, are disabled. So you get power from shore power, come through supply the AC bus, through one of the AFPs to the DC bus, and then you can charge batteries. If this was to be lost due to a power interruption on the beach, or if you're out of dock where there is no shore power, then you can operate off the batteries. Yeah? To be those batteries, if they're dead and you're charging them off shore power, how many hours does it take to have them fully loaded? Depends on the infrastructure that you've got for shore power, so it really depends on the size of the circuit breaker. We can charge these batteries at, you know, two or three hundred kilowatts, basically. It depends on the size of the battery array, but you can charge them at a, at a high rate of charge, and uh, but they usually you're not supported that well at a shore power facility. So at two or three hundred kilowatts, you can have them charged up in 20 minutes at, uh, yeah, at, at uh, and then obviously if you're on a shore power connection, there's only 50 kilowatts, which can take four four times that time. But usually the vessels are in for you know, several hours at a time, so they can charge up 